Good morning, students. Uh, yesterday we had uh, ended on uh, by highlighting uh, one of some of the very important features of one of the very famous uh, towns of the ancient world that was Uruk, and uh, uh, we and basically talking about its uh, urban settlements and uh, how uh, Uruk as a as a place which had started with just as a farming community because uh, of its proximity to uh, the rivers uh, and the Tigris and Euphrates ultimately grew into into uh, one of the largest cities uh, in the world during those times. Uh, okay, so we continue with there. The site was continuously occupied uh, from about uh, 4200 before Christ to about 400 AD and by about um, 2800 uh, before Christ it had expanded to 400 hectares and we uh, also saw that uh, Uruk uh, was in fact was much much bigger than the largest set, uh, settlement of um, Indus Valley civilization Mohenjo-daro and much almost more than uh, twice the size of Mohanjadaro, so you can understand the number of people who lived there and also the extent and the size of urban settlement which was there in Uruk. Now, war captives and local people were put to work for the temple or directly for the ruler, and we had also seen yesterday the importance which a uh, temple had in. Uh, in the life of all the contemporary ancient civilizations, not just in Mesopotamian, whether it was um, whether it was um, the Egyptian, whether it was the Chinese, uh, but of course, um, interestingly, uh, the contemporary Indus Valley civilization we didn't have a very elaborate, um, you know, a temple kind of a project. Uh, but then, yes the other civilizations did have that okay and this rather than the agriculture tax tax was compulsory and those who were put to work were paid rations hundreds of ration lists have uh, been found which give against uh, people's names the quantities of grain cloth or oil allotted to them it had been estimated that one of the temples took uh, 1500 men working 10 hours a day five years to build you know, so you can understand how elaborate that uh, uh, the whole uh, the whole uh, project of a temple building had become and how important also it had become whereby uh, the, the the state the the city was um, allocating a huge amount of its resources for its construction well well planned because uh, you cannot have um, more than thousand people working on a project uh, for 10 hours a day and something which takes five years to build um, without working on meticulously on the details of it and you have to understand if something that goes on for such a long period of time the amount of resources and money that it would consume right so uh, that's how it is now uh, we come here to uh, the bronze tools came into use for various crafts architects learned to construct build uh, uh, brick columns uh, there be, uh, there being no suitable wood to bear the weight of the roof of large holes now uh, students i have said this before that uh, you know you have to understand when you there uh, of course there are trees and there are woods okay but then every tree or every wood has its own different unique character okay um, uh, mango uh, the wood of a mango tree would be of a different property than wood of a palm tree or for that matter the wood of a people tree or for that matter the wood of a, of a eucalyptus tree so they might be trees or a shisham or oak or whatever it is so they might all be trees but all of them the wood would having would be having different characters different properties and naturally would be used for different purposes so uh, the tree that that used to grow around these areas they were definitely trees but they could not endure uh, such massive weights on them and naturally so for that for the, for that reason that kind of wood had to be brought from different places okay now uh, in sculpture um, there were superb achievements not in easily available clay but in imported stone and then there was students this is one of the most important things uh, that you must always remember and then there was a the technological landmark that we can say is appropriate to an urban economy 
the potter's wheel too. In the long run, the wheel enables a potter's workshop to mass produce dozens of similar pots at a time. Uh, students, uh, today uh, it, a potter's wheel, uh, I, I wonder how many of you have even seen a potter's wheel because for you and for people of our generation, it is something like, Are ye kumhar logon ka kaam hai. You know, hame kya karna? but students, uh, you have to understand one very important thing that in those years, that is 5,000 years ago, 4,000 years ago, they were uh, uh, the, you know the masterpieces of technology today you have uh, you know you you see your tires and your scooters and your car and your trucks you think it is ah, tires, but you have to understand 5000 6000 7000 or 10000 years ago when uh, man invented the wheel it was considered to be the greatest invention of its times Today you think that your smartphone that you carry in your pocket happens to be um, a technological marvel. But in probably 50 years from now, uh, you know, the technology would become so advanced that, uh, you know, the people in 20, uh, 2060 or 2070, you know, they would probably be uh, wondering that we were using such an old fashioned technology, that we were fools, we were duffers because they would have made so much of a technological progress uh, by then, by 2060 or 2070, right? So, portal wheel at that point in time was considered to be a revolutionary product, okay? And uh, what it did was, today you have massive factories which turn out uh, which turn out things at large quantities, uh, whether you talk about anything for that matter, whether pr pr printing of books or whether you talk about uh, making of uh, computers, laptops, every day uh, thousands of pieces are manufactured because there are factories for that. But now, uh, in those years, that is before the Porter wheel actually happened, um, the Porter had to make every everything every utensil that he made um, every utensil that he made which was or any item that he made he had to use it by hand that because and that used to take a lot of time and a lot of time and a lot of people had to be engaged uh, for that yeah. but after potter's wheel it was very convenient that just two three people could sit and uh, they could uh, make a, a great many number of earthen pots or whatever they wanted to make so uh, that was a remarkable and a major uh, invention at that point in time okay so uh, uh, we would be looking at these boxes students once we uh, finish the chapter surely okay Life in the city. Uh, <clears throat> life in the city, uh, I would like to type um, straight away go to the second paragraph. That is, in Mesopotamian society, the nuclear family was the norm. Although a married son and his family often resided with his parents, the father was the head of the family. We know a little about the procedures for marriage. A declaration was made about the willingness to marry the bride's parents giving the consent to the marriage then a gift was given by the groom's people to the bride's people then the wedding took place gifts were exchanged by uh, both parties who ate together made offerings in a temple when her mother-in-law came to fetch her the bride was given her share of the inheritance by her father the father's house herds fields etc was in uh, inherited by the son students i read this because there is so much of similarity with what happens even today in those societies and even in our Indian civilization and in our Indian societies, okay? It is exactly how it happens. If you read this paragraph, you would you would feel, yaar, ye to aaj ki baat ho rahi hai. right? Because that's exactly how it is practiced even today, okay? Now, uh, Let's go. Uh, but yes, one thing, uh, this paragraph, let's look at Ur, one of the earliest cities to have been excavated. It was a town whose ordinary houses were systematically excavated in the 1930s. Narrow winding streets indicate that wheel carts could not have reached many of the houses. Sacks of grain and firewood would have arrived on donkey backs. And narrow winding streets and the regular shape of the house plots also indicate the absence of town planning. Students, this is very important and that's why I read it. 
Students, uh, Mesopotamian civilization, though it was a contemporary civilization of uh, Indus Valley, but Indus Valley civilization, as we have uh, uh, seen, um, uh, and or rather you would see, that Indus Valley civilization had an amazing town planning. Though it was also an urban setup, but it had a fantastic town planning. Now, something which, um, as this paragraph suggests, um, because in, Mesop in Indus Valley civilization, you had broad roads, cutting at right angles. It was a grid pattern. Now, everything very, very modern, and it appears to be very, very contemporary. But uh, in Mesopotamian civilization, this thing was not there, and the town planning was not that perfect. And which is evident from the sentences which we just read. There were, uh, and not just that, uh, narrow winding streets and irregular shapes of house plots indicate an absence of town planning. There were no street drains of the kind we find in contemporary Mohenjo-daro exactly. Drains and clay pipes were instead found in the inner courtyards of the old houses, and it is thought that the house roofs sloped inward and rainwater was channeled via the drain pipes into stumps in the inner courtyard. And what is the meaning of stump? It is written here to your left. A stump is a covered basin in the ground into which water and sewage flow. Okay, uh, that basically takes away the uh, the dirty water and the water that a household uses. So they did not have, firstly, those uh, very broad uh, roads and good town planning which uh, Mohenjo-daro and the Indus Valley Civilization had and if you remember Indus Valley Civilization uh, is also uh, very remarkable for its drainage system because even uh, 5,000, 6,000 years ago um, the people in Indus Valley Civilization understood the significance of cleanliness. Uh, students, you have to understand if your drainage system is not proper then it is just a matter of time that uh, the whole uh, air becomes unbreathable, okay? Now, people in Indus Valley Civilization understood that way, way uh, much before uh, everyone else did, their contemporary civilizations did, okay? Thank you.